So I'm back in to show um, a simpler BCI compared to what I showed in the last video. If you haven't seen the last video, I would recommend watching that first because I explain um, what I'm doing, what my um, project was, uh, BCI being Brain Computer Interface. And in this video, I'll be going through stuff based on that, so I'd recommend watching that first. So, because I didn't have a functioning BCI in the last video, I want to do kind of a proof of, proof of concept that the circuit can be used for a brain computer interface. So the way I'm doing that is by monitoring alpha waves. So this time I'm connected to 01 and 02 going to the 1020 system for my two measurement electrodes. And then I have the driven relay connected here. I'm using 01 and 02 rather than OZ and the left mastoid compared to the last video. As from my experience, I've been able to get better results measuring alpha waves using 0102 compared to OZ and the right or left mastoid. So yeah, that's why I'm connected up that way. So I'm just going to show you uh, a trace of what I'm measuring now. So on the top there, you'll see a uh, real-time trace of what I'm measuring between 01 and 02. So a lot of activity, but I can't tell you exactly what's what. And down on the bottom, uh, we see an FFT of every second of the real-time trace. So I'm going to close my eyes and hopefully you'll see the 10 hertz spike that we've seen before. And so I'm going to do that now. So yeah, I just opened my eyes and I did see there was the 10 hertz spike that we've seen before. So that that spike is going to be used to control a simpler BCI, which I'll show now. I'll just set up now and start recording again. So I'm back now without the swim cap this time, but a bit of hair sticking up because of it. But anyway, uh, I pre-recorded me using the half BCI because I wasn't able to get a, re a reliable trace while I was um, moving around and talking. And I need to get um, a good baseline for a ca uh, calculating threshold for the half wave so I can improve the half wave detection. So I'm just going to do, um, I'm going to talk over a uh, video recorded. So I'm going to start that now. So for the first 30 seconds, I'm going to record a baseline to calculate that threshold, as I said. So I'm just going to be staring into the centered screen and um, not moving around and not moving my eyes or blinking or doing anything, really. And then when it's done, you'll see the snow box gets bigger. So my eyes are open. So I'm using that as a no. So when there's no alpha waves, uh, that's a no. So whenever I close my eyes, uh, the S box should get bigger. So my eyes are closed now. The S did get bigger there, but it's not constantly bigger. Uh, the second time I try and uh, close my eyes, it does work a bit more reliable. But you, d you do see the yes does get bigger a lot more often than when my eyes are closed and when it's open. So right now, uh, eyes are open. The S box is not changed at all. No box is constantly big. And eyes are closed again. So the yes box is getting bigger, more than it was before. Like I said, this is just proof of concept and something I threw together fairly quickly. So there definitely is some improvements in some of the calculations and the um, thresholding and stuff like that. So like I said in the last video, um, I'll be posting all the circuits and the instructions on the code all online. Uh, I probably will be posting the halfway BCI. Even though it is kind of a hack together version of the more complex BCI, uh, like as said, more improvements that could be done to it. So I'm I may make improvements to it in the future, but at the moment I'll probably just post it the way it is because it is functional. But um, yeah, thanks for watching.